get started with Kellen Moore, uh, Colin. The Philadelphia offensive coordinator was brought in to fix Jalen Hurts after a rough last year. It's working so far. Eagles second in total yards per game. The offense has looked very sharp, although, uh, you know, they didn't score enough points against the Saints. But they're 2-1, and one, and just a few weeks into the season, Nick Sirianni said he's playing a role some of us can relate to, backseat driver. <laughs> I'm letting Kellen run the, you know, drive the car. And 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 just like my wife will say you know, to me, hey, make sure you take it right here or left here. And she's giving me directions. I'm a you know same same thing in these scenarios. It's just it's just chiming in when I have something to chime in. Well, he's been at his best when he lets his coordinator, if the coordinator is competent, call the plays. That's okay. They call him walk around coaches. Jimmy Johnson let his coordinators make calls. Pete Carroll was a walk around coach. Belichick, to a large degree, walked around, yeah. monitor his coaches. Occasionally, he had to snip at Josh McDaniels once a game like, Josh, do this, do that. But in the end, I don't have a problem at all with Nick saying, I'm going to let my guys drive the car. I prefer my coach, like Kyle Shanahan's calling the plays. He's brilliant. I would prefer that's not the case. Well, for now, that's fine. If all of a sudden they're sputtering at 6-6, six and six, and we know Sirianni's on the hot seat, he's not going down letting Kellen Moore call a place. You know that's going to happen. Sirianni, if he's fighting for his job, right? He's got to take over, no? Now, it's no. early in the season, but... No, they just... Let me, let me say this again. God, you guys. Philadelphia just went to the hottest team in the league, New Orleans, and beat them. It's, it's, so what? We're on to week four. You don't know, but without A.J. Brown, their, their best well, player. So they're without A.J. Brown this week. I'm looking at the practice report Devontae right Smith. And no Lynn Johnson. And Devontae they're, Smith. And they're going to go to Tampa and eat. Ooh. Okay. That may I, show up in the blazing fire. Oh! Oh, it may show up. Philadelphia in is going to Tampa, and they're going to eat. So, guys. It may show up in headlines as well. Ooh, a little head-to-head -head action, huh? <laughs> wow. So, so you're really fine with, hey, hey, we beat the Saints. It's all good in the hood. Let's just let Kellen Moore keep calling his place. Yes. Okay. I, I'm just telling you, if you look at the history, this is not the NBA or a college basketball. I mean, Nick Saban controlled virtually everything. Lane Kiffin's call in place. I get it. In the NFL, most of the great coaches are not necessarily on the headset. They may put it on in crisis, but they're not on the headset. Right, but for now, when your job's on the line and they're trying to run you out of town, you better get on the headset and save your job, no? Or do you just let... They hey. just beat the Saints. I... And now they're going to get back in the plane, fly down there. Let me tell you, they'll be drinking Mai Tais 20 minutes after that game of the Bucks. Real? I, I, the wind and rain from Hurricane Helene may be too bad. That field could okay. be really ugly. Okay. Well, Devontae and A.J. Brown may not play. So yeah. you're telling me it's going to be a run game with Saquon Barkley, Saquon, Jalen Hurts? 35 carries for Saquon. I'm just saying. So I, I looked up the weather. My take is, well, the weather would benefit Philadelphia because I got Saquon Barkley, J Jalen Hurts. So quarterback, running back, I got better players, especially running the ball in crappy weather. So the weather plays into Philadelphia. Okay. I mean, if you got a 25 mile an hour win, you're not throwing deep balls to Jalen, uh, uh, AJ Brown anyway. So the weather even helps Philadelphia. Hmm. What you don't want to do is go down to Miami as a northern team in like September and it's 98 and humid. But going okay. down there when it's wet and windy and you have a uh, Saquon Barkley, I'm good with that. All right. Uh, okay. So let's uh, go to the second story. <laughs> okay. First of all, I don't know why Jason McIntyre is all, all of a sudden being all like weird about Philly. Like it's like unless he's sharing something negative about Philadelphia, he doesn't have anything to say. He's done this and he keeps doing the Herdline news is all about Sirianni and, and this or that. Like it's been very regular and constant and, and especially usually the Herdline news is usually, um, you know, uh, very diverse but it feels like every single day it's something to do with philadelphia eagles and i get it philadelphia eagles are a really popular team but um just kind, kind of i don't even i don't understand kind of weird maybe uh, i i honestly don't know um but um listen kellen moore should obviously be driving the car and calling the plays and not sirianni right like that's why they brought over kellen moore sirianni has already proven to be a bad play caller as soon as he gave up the play calling duties to shane steichen everything changed just like that okay and 
So he's not good. There's already rumors around that it was actually Sirianni's offense last season and not the original offensive coordinator and that the real offensive coordinator never really got a chance because of Sirianni. And I don't necessarily believe that, but whether that's true or not, that then would just be more proof that Sirianni should not really be having a controlling um, presence in that offense. And that has always been the problem with Sirianni, uh, quite frankly, is because you're just like, well, what does he do then? You know, what is he doing? Um, you really just have the mercy then of your coordinators, which makes it hard from a long-term sustainability uh, standpoint of building a team and building a winning culture. But so yeah, Kellen Moore deserves to just have control. That's why you brought him. That's why he's hired. That's why he's paid. It's you. It's we're here to execute Kellen Moore's offensive vision, right? And 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 his talent at calling plays and how to win games offensively. Of course, Sirianni is still going to have his idea on on a game plan and talk and still be the leader. But it's still like I'm. I'm getting you to, to do this. This is this is what you know the vision is. I'm 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 trusting you to do it. That's what great leaders do, quite frankly. Whether you're the leader of Google or YouTube or Apple or whatever, you're you and when your job is on the line too, you're getting the best people that you can to do their job, to maximize their talents, to maximize their levels of success to put them in a position to succeed because that's what helps you succeed. If you're the CEO, you're not the person who's also now shipping packages and, and taping it together and then going upstairs and quickly crunching the numbers to do accounting and then quickly running over to the truck and driving the truck now. And that's not how it works. You hire the best people that you can. You empower them to do um the best that they can, you know, put them in consistent positions to succeed. And if you are really the, the leader, the captain, the coach, the, you know, the, the guy who has all the power, then you're using your own talents to guide them. You know, if Kellen Moore is like, hey, I really think we should run and blah, 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 blah. And if Sirianni is truly a legitimate head coach, he goes, you know what? That's a great idea. And I think we should do that. But remember, look at, uh, look what they have on the back end. They're this, they're lacking here and there. I really think we should add a couple of these in here as well. And Kellen Moore is like, okay, yeah, great, great, good idea. Okay, yeah, great. It's collaborative. So, um, but it's not controlling. And in a way, you could say that that's what a, a backseat driver is doing. Hey, remember, make a left. But that, that's why the analogy is kind of tough, because is he walking up to Kellen Moore and saying, go for it on fourth down right now. This is what I want. Or is he saying, hey, do you want to consider going for it on fourth down? Because there's different levels of backseat drivers to stick with this analogy, because backseat drivers drive me crazy. Sometimes they say, hey, remember, you got to turn left up here. And it's like, yeah, great. Thank you. And sometimes it's, you know, hey, you got to turn left up here. And he goes, yeah, I know. I can see on the GPS that we're making a left. You don't have to tell me that. Or sometimes it's, hey, you can park right over there. And it's like, I'm parking over here. I can see the parking lot. I know where to park. You don't have to tell me where to park. There's plenty of parking spots. Just stop. Let me be in control of where the heck we're going to park. There's no difference between us parking here and parking there. So just stop. So again, to go along with the analogy, it's like, what, what does that actually mean? And that's, that's always been the problem with Sirianni. But with that said, the other thing that I want to address is... Um, is well you know what actually we'll talk about the the eagles game because because colin said they're going to feast and i want to talk about that more but um i'll do that for his um uh whatever he calls them his herd picks i, I forget honestly he just said it um you know um so yeah I'll, I'll make a separate video for that we'll just keep this i guess about um the offense and and sirianni and kellen moore but those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. What do you guys all think about Nick Sirianni and Kellen Moore and their relationship and, and kind of how this approach should go to put the Eagles in the best position to succeed? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I'd absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much, and see you next time.